Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. In this video, we'll take a brief look at the Abri ARF8 handheld transceiver. Now, although this has been around a while, I think it's worth a feature. We'll talk more about the specs in a moment, but just to cover what's in the box, you'll find the usual suspects, like a manual, which in my opinion is not too bad. It's actually written well and in understandable English. The included antenna is quite short considering its spec band coverage, and it doesn't appear to have any frequency range markings on it like other handheld antennas I've seen before. The included light iron rechargeable battery is stated to have a capacity of 8800 mAh at 7.2 volts. Now the version that I received came with a 2 pin adapter, although this will work on multiple mains voltages, so I'll just use an adapter. A desktop charger unit is also included and it's the only way to charge the supplied battery. But there's no USB charging like we've seen on some of the more recent models. Also included in the box is a belt clip and lanyard, pretty much the items we would expect to see on a radio like this. Attaching the antenna and battery is extremely easy. Just screw the antenna into the reverse SMA socket and then slide push the battery on the rear until it clicks into place. Now the Abri ARF8 is built really well. It feels really sturdy and solid in the hand. The front facing keypad just below the 1.7 inch color screen has a nice textured feel to the buttons, although sometimes the buttons can be a little squeaky. On the top, there are two rotary controls, one for on and off plus volume control and the other an endless turning rotary encoder, which is used for changing memories or adjusting the VFO directly. A status LED and emergency button is also located on the top of the radio. These can be programmed in software. The left side of the radio features the main PTT button along with two programmable function buttons. Now these are default programmed to either activate an FM broadcast receiver or open the squelch. Now the right side of the radio hosts the speaker microphone port, which also acts as a programming port when using a computer to program the memory channels. Now software is available free of charge, but my box did not come with a programming cable. Now luckily I had one of these rather neat multi-lead programming cables, which cover many types of radios. Now if you don't have one of these, I'll link below. It's a rather handy cable to have, especially if you like to tinker with lots of different radios from different manufacturers. Now the GPS feature works really well and is very quick to acquire its location lock. But apart from displaying the GPS information on screen, there isn't really any other features within the radio which makes use of this. I guess the best use case for this would be for search and rescue environment, where the user can relay their exact coordinates over the air. Now within the settings, the color of the screen can be altered to suit the user's liking. Now I quite like the black background as it makes reading the display very easy. Of course, if you like other colors, then there's quite a few to choose from. Now I performed a quick audio test using my SDR play receiver and talking into the radio. Now here's how the audio sounded from both wide and narrow mode. This is M0 DQW, mic zero, Delta Quebec whiskey, testing audio, testing audio, testing audio. Mic zero, Delta Quebec whiskey, testing audio on the wide setting, on the wide setting, M0 DQW testing. This is M0 DQW, mic zero, Delta Quebec whiskey, testing audio on the narrow setting, testing audio on the narrow setting. Mic zero, Delta Quebec whiskey, testing audio on the narrow setting, M0 DQW. Now let's talk briefly about the specifications on paper. Well, the radio supports TX and RX from 136 to 520 megahertz. Now this is grouped into six bands. The ARF8 has the usual features we would expect on a radio like this, from having a scan function for both memories and VFO, to supporting CTCSS and DCS. PTTID is also available, which is more geared towards the commercial market. But tone bursts for old fashioned repeater opening is available with four different frequencies, including the popular 1750 Hertz tone burst. Now, even though the display will show two frequencies or memories, they cannot be used in full duplex. This means if you start to transmit on one of the bands, then the other is muted until you release the PTT. So if you wanted to use for satellite work, where you'd need to hear the audio coming down, then it's not going to work. 
With the battery half charged, let's take a look at the actual power output on various frequencies. Remember the rear label that we saw earlier within the radio stated 20 watts. Now my power meter has a dummy load connected on the output to help show a true power reading coming from the radio. Now first up is 145.500 and here we can see an RF output of around 3.5 watts on high power. And then on low power we see just 0.6 watts. Now at 433.500 on low power we see an output of around 1 watt and on high power we see an output of around 3 watts. Now at 446 on high power we see around 2.5 watts and on low power we see around 0.6 watts. At 225 MHz on low power we see around 0.1 watt and on high power we see around 0.8 watt. Now these results in my opinion are quite disappointing, they seem a lot lower than I was expecting. However, this could be related to the current status of the battery charge. Now if you have one of these radios with a fully charged battery, then how many watts do you get per band? Let me know in the comments below. Now I didn't get much receive audio on film, but I will say that the internal speaker is very good. It's loud, punchy and has good quality with a strongly received signal. Even weak signals are perfectly eligible and readable. Um, because I'm, I'm out of the, the ground plane, the ground uh, wave. Oh, you would see that, and it would be it'll bother a few other people, but still it is what it is. Mind you, I, I'm like the New York repeater, which is 1.3 kilowatts, David, did you know that? There we go, guys, the Abri ARF8 radio. Now, if you have one of these, let me know down in the comments below what you think of this radio. Until the next one, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.